It's Encounter on the Voice of America. Encounter on the Voice of America brings together advocates and opponents debating the critical issues of our time in a freewheeling, no-holds-barred discussion of fact and opinion. With today's guests and the topic for Encounter, here is Carol Castiel. Welcome to Encounter on the Voice of America. On this edition of the program, the controversy over same-sex marriage. Hello again, I'm Carol Castiel. U.S. President Barack Obama made history in May when he became the first U.S. president to explicitly endorse marriage for same-sex couples. He had previously hesitated on gay marriage because he thought that civil unions would be sufficient. But when several members of his cabinet, including Vice President Joe Biden, declared their support for same-sex marriage on national television, the president reportedly felt compelled to clarify his stance. Nonetheless, President Obama, who previously defined his position on the matter of same-sex marriage as evolving, has already supported a number of initiatives, including an end to the military's Don't Ask, Don't Tell law, which barred homosexuals from serving openly in the armed services, and a decision not to defend the Federal Defense of Marriage Act, which defines marriage as a union between a man and a woman. Gay activist groups have hailed President Obama's support of same-sex marriage, but many conservative religious groups who believe marriage is a relationship between a man and a woman have expressed disappointment or outright condemnation of the president's position. So what is the political fallout of President Obama's announcement? What role will the polarizing issue of same-sex marriage play in the 2012 race for the White House? And what are the legal ramifications? For more on the same-sex marriage debate, we have two opposing views. Joe Deutsch is the federal director for Freedom to Marry. That's an advocacy organization based in Washington, which aims to promote same-sex marriage nationwide and to educate the public about why marriage matters to same-sex couples and their families. And Janice Krauss. She's a senior fellow at the Beverly LaHaye Institute, the think tank associated with Concerned Women for America. Concerned Women for America is a public policy and advocacy organization based in Washington, dedicated to promoting Christian values in schools and communities and in federal and local government. Ladies, welcome to the program. Thank, Thank you. you. And Joe Deutsch, uh, let me begin with you. Okay. Why do gay and lesbian couples want to get married? You know, LBG, lesbian and gay couples, want to get married for the same reason everybody wants to get married in this country. We want to show our commitment and our love to one person who we want to spend the rest of our life with, through better and worse, through sickness and health, the same vows that everybody takes. It is that commitment and that moment of making a, a, a choice that you want to spend the rest of your life with one person. That's what marriage is and that's why we want to be able to get legally married. But why aren't civil unions, for example, enough? If you go anywhere in this country or anywhere in the world and you say to someone, I am civil unioned with my partner, they're not going to know what you mean. There's no clear understanding of that, both in just the language or in the legal rights that you bring with you. But if you go and you say, this is my husband or this is my wife, I am legally married, people know what that means. There's no question when you're in a hospital and your partner or your husband or wife is sick that you are the person who can go in and see them. There's no question about what happens when they pass away in terms of social security disability. This is clear with the language of marriage, and that's why we use the language of marriage. Turning to you, Janice Krauss, why are you opposed to same-sex marriage? Marriage has been between a man and a woman for 3,000 years. You look across cultures, you look across uh, any kind of history, uh, you find that marriage has been defined as a union between a man and a woman throughout all of that time across cultures. And yet suddenly we have uh, an elite in our country, in the United States, who has decided that this is something that we want to just throw away. And I think it's a very ill-advised thing because marriage exists to protect children primarily and to protect women. 
and we now have a whole culture that wants to say women don't need men and we have a whole culture that says we don't need marriage to shape the values of our children, to prepare them to be good citizens. We don't need a man and a woman influence on a child, a mom and a dad influence on children. And I think we're throwing away so much of our history for an experiment that uh, is putting at risk women and children. But as Joe Deutsch said, uh, is there something wrong with committed gay couples who want the same benefits as heterosexual couples. What, what, what is wrong with that? Well, I think it's, um, it's a good argument, but the truth is that anybody who has uh, a loved one, whether it's marriage or whatever, you, there are wills that will allow them to designate who gets their benefits. Any hospital will have someone uh, have a procedure that will allow whoever the person who is ill uh, wants to come visit them. So I think that's kind of a bogus argument. Uh, it does not hold water when you look at it because the provisions are there for anybody to designate who they want to be the recipient of their benefits, who they want to uh, visit them in the hospital. Turning back to you, Joe Deutsch, clearly we have two separate uh, different opinions on this very controversial topic, but let me go to the point of President Obama's statement. Uh, what in your view is the national significance of President Obama openly stating that he supports same-sex marriage? You know, for, for many Americans, um, there is a moment and a journey and an evolution that's occurring right now in really figuring out what the reality is in families in this country. The reality is that theoretically what Janice said may be true, but in reality it is not. Same-sex couples do not have those protections. I, for one, when I travel, carry around a will just in case something happens to me or my partner. But if we are in a really serious situation, that will may be ignored altogether. We have real life stories of men from who were married for 50, who were married for three years, been together 58 years, that when one of them passed away, the other one did not get social security disability. We have stories of families who were on vacation when one partner gets seriously ill and is not allowed to go see, the other partner is not allowed to go in and visit her when she's dying. These are truths for gay and lesbian couples right now. There is no protection we can do. And what the president realized in his journey and in and talking to real people and talking to family members and talking to friends were those gaps. Because of the laws that are on the books, the protections of 1138 federal guarantees are not given to same-sex couples that are legally married in this country. There's no, there's no way around that except to pass a solid, to move forward on a solid freedom to marry. And let's be clear too that there are only a handful of states in the United mm -hmm. States that actually endorse uh, same-sex marriage. Right. Right now there's eight states and, and the District of Columbia. All right. Uh, Janice Krause, back to you with respect to you know, your reaction to what President Obama said. Now, he made the statement. He said that he was evolving in his position. We know that, of course, the statement came on the heels of some members of his cabinet, right. uh, mainly uh, mm -hmm. Vice President Joe Biden and uh, the uh, Secretary of Education, who said that they were in favor. So there was obviously some calculation there. But nonetheless, uh, it's clear that he has been thinking about this, and perhaps he made the statement a little earlier than he would have liked. But uh, the states still determine uh, who gets married. So, again, your reaction to how significant this statement is? Well, I think it's very significant, although it has had a lot of uh, controversy, even amongst the uh, gay and lesbian community. People have said, well, it's just a political statement, and when it comes right down to it, the states still have the authority, and the president has acknowledged that and endorsed that, supported the idea that states will make the decision. So uh, they've been rather critical, saying he's trying to have it, uh, talk out of both sides of his mouth and have it both ways. So. Um, there is some controversy about the meaningfulness of the decision. However, I think the um, ramifications are pretty profound, and I think it's very disruptive of the culture. The president has said he has a change of perception, and that change of perception is going to change 
3,000 years of history. That change of perception is going to undermine the family structure that already in this country is very unstable and has been undermined very dramatically in the last 40 years. We're in a situation right now where we have 41% of the children in this country, the United States, born out of wedlock. We have decades and mountains of social science research that says they have very predictable negative outcomes. And this is from left and right, regardless of who's looking at it uh, amongst the think tanks and the researchers. That evidence is very, very predictable that children face very definite risk. We don't have a body of evidence with uh, homosexual relationships, but I think we can assume from the very profound studies that have already been made that every single household arrangement except for mom and dad families is very risky for children. I think it's very dangerous for the president to undermine that and to essentially have a social experiment with the family. Just to, to play the devil's advocate, there is some irony in this in that uh, some say that um, the fact that gay couples who want to be in committed relationships sanctified by marriage actually exemplify the best of the family values which generally conservative groups are always touting. What would you say to that? I would say you can always find specific instances uh, and you know it's very moving to hear Joe talk, uh, Joe excuse me, it's very moving to hear Joe talk but at the same time we're talking about centuries of culture. We're talking about a very profound altering of uh, our cultural mores, our cultural morals, and we're saying to a whole generation of young people that an institution that has been a stabilizing factor, Cicero, way back 50 years before the birth of Christ, said this is the foundation of cultures, it's the foundation of societies, and we're going to throw all that away. Uh, I think it's a very dangerous move, I think it's very unsettling, and I think it's very uh, risky for the nation's children. Turning back to you, uh, Joe Deutsch, talk about the legal ramifications of uh, President Obama's support for same-sex marriage, and you may want to respond to some of uh, Janice Krause's concerns about the fact that uh, this is a profound alteration of cultural mores that we've been accustomed to here in this country. Uh, what about those concerns? And I actually disagree. I do not think it's a profound change. I mean, a profound change over 3,000 years of marriage. Um, women used to have to were chattel of their husbands. Um, there were dowries that had to be made. If, if a husband wanted more than one wife, he could do that. Um, interracial couples could not get married. I mean, there has been a movement and a transition and a history change for marriage. And the fact that I want to marry the woman who I love, who I have been committed to, um, raise our children in a family with ha which has all of the legal protections that other families have, should actually be applauded by Janice and, and her group. Um, you know, the, the reality is, and President Obama understands this because he supported repealing a law that we have on the books that have been on the books since 1996, the Defense of Marriage Act. And basically what the Defense of Marriage Act did was deny married couples, same-sex married couples in this country, from 1,138 federal protections. Those are protections that protect the family. Those are protections like um, health care. Those are protections like social security benefits, which I've talked about a little bit already. Those are the protections that families need to help in every aspect of the family. My family would be much secure, much safer legally if I could legally marry my partner. And the reality is that my children, who are amazing children, are amazing because they have two incredibly gifted parents who love them and who support them. But it would be much better if we had the legal protections that we don't have because of the Defense of Marriage Act. You know, using this line over and over again about um, the moral decay of the country and, and what happens to the children, my children are fabulous. And my friends who have children, they're fabulous. And we are the epitome of a married couple without any civil and legal rights in this country. And that's what we're fighting right now. Turning back to you, Janice Krauss, uh, Joe Deutsch brought up this point of civil rights. Many 
people are saying that this is sort of the last bastion of the civil rights movement, giving uh, protections to the gay and lesbian community, such as the right to marry. I'd like you to respond to that and also uh, to what Joe said with respect to the legal protections. Um, so basically the question is, are you and others who support your opposition to gay marriage opposed primarily on religious grounds? Is it really a, about, you know, a, is it a religious commitment that you find? Um, because many in the religious community, whether Muslims or Christians, it is among that community that the objections are, are the uh, strongest. Right. Um, it obviously, for my organization, it very definitely is because we are a Christian organization and our beliefs and our values are based on the Bible. Um, but it's beyond that, too, uh, for us as well as many of the other organizations. We are very strong advocates for the family. We're very strong advocates for children. And while it's very compelling to call this a civil rights issue, the United States has more individual freedoms than any other country in the world. People come here for individual freedom, and every Every citizen in the United States, regardless of their behavior in a bedroom, have the benefit of all of those freedoms that's embedded in our Constitution, that's guaranteed in our Constitution. So it's a bit of an exaggeration from my point of view to say that these are necessary for homosexual couples because it's not a matter of civil rights. Uh, <laughs> every American has the same civil rights. So to say that they are denied civil rights based on uh, their sexual, uh, so-called sexual orientation, I think is, is an erroneous argument uh, because the individual rights are there, the freedoms are there. I think um, in terms of the morality and uh, the um, perception from people of faith, Yes, it is very definitely a matter of religious faith for many people around the world. And it has been, as I said earlier, for centuries. Uh, but more than that, this is the founda one of the foundation stones of American culture, the freedom to uh, have families that are the cornerstone of society and for have children to have the safety, have a hedge around them that it has the protection of both a mom and a dad. Um, there's so much social science literature that says it's really important to have both a mom and a dad. And single mother families have a history in this country as well as around the world of providing only one aspect of what children need. And that's not a criticism of single moms because many of them are heroic and do a you know, wonderful job of raising their children. But when you have a culture, you have to have uh, mores, you have to have the kinds of policies that benefit the majority of the people in that culture. And you have to have policies that are overwhelmingly for the majority and not make policy based on what is good for individual circumstances and for minorities. You're listening to Encounter on The Voice of America. My guests are Joe Deutsch. She's the federal director for Freedom to Marry and Janice Krauss, She's a senior fellow at Concerned Women for America. We're talking about the fallout and implications of President Obama's endorsement of same-sex marriage. And did you know that same-sex marriage internationally is carried out in 10 countries? The Netherlands, Belgium, Spain, Canada, South Africa, Norway, Sweden, Portugal, Iceland, and Argentina. And this is a reminder that we love to hear from you. So please send us your feedback to encounter at voanews.com and follow me on Twitter at Carol Castiel VOA. And here's a shout out to a loyal listener mm -hmm. from Nigeria, Francis Rotimi. Hmm. Well, back to you, uh, Joe Deutsch. Uh, let's continue our conversation, uh, particularly about the, the sort of the political ramifications mm -hmm. of President Obama's statement. This is an election year. Mm -hmm. Um, do you think this will help or hurt President Obama? We know that the presumptive Republican nominee came out uh, against same-sex marriage. That's Mitt Romney saying marriage is a relationship between men and women. I mean, how much of an issue will this be or not in the election? Well, for us, the significant part is that the sitting president of the United States has come out in support of the freedom to marry. He has supported repealing the Don't Ask, Don't Tell, uh, repealing Defense of Marriage Act um, and passing the Respect for Marriage Act. Um, and so he has been moving along this journey for a while. 
What he is saying to the majority of Americans who now support the freedom to marry is that we should not be discriminating against any family in this country. Um, and that we should move forward on this. This is not a political liability, we don't think, because if you look at any demographic, if you look at age groups, if you look at party affiliation, if you look especially at um, race, if you look at religion, the majority of Americans are now supporting the freedom to marry. The majority of Americans understand that this is a right to, to really understand the love and commitment that these families are showing and wanting to express, the protections that they need for their families and for raising good, solid families with legal protections. And that's what the president's saying. And it wasn't, and it isn't just the Democrats. Um, you know, and it's not just President Obama, uh, President Carter, President Clinton, Vice President Cheney, both parties, significant voices in American politics have said, now is the time. And internationally as well, um, the president-elect of France is supporting the freedom to marry and plans to move forward in France. Um, the prime minister of England has said very clearly he supports the freedom to marry because he is a conservative. So it is time, this is the movement, this is the movement here in the United States and this is the movement around the world. Turning to you, Janice Krause, that's a lot to respond to, but of course there are political ramifications. But what Joe Deutsch said uh, does ring true in many ways. It's, this is an issue that sort of crosses um, political lines. There are Republicans uh, who, who have come out in favor. Uh, it's not just Democrats. The youth uh, are, uh, the majority of the youth here in America at least have basically endorsed uh, same-sex marriage. Fifty percent of Americans, polls indicate, are basically in favor. So does that put you and your organization perhaps a bit at odd you know, with public opinion and, and the trend, both here and abroad? It definitely does not, because you have to look at uh, the way those polls were taken. Uh, that's the theme that we hear so much in the media today. But I remind your audience that uh, 31 states in America have voted on the issue of whether same-sex marriage should be allowed in their states, and all 31, where the vote has come up, have overwhelmingly said no. And this, I think, is the voice of the people in this country. Uh, it's in North Carolina, the most recent vote was 61% against same-sex marriage. So I don't think it's as overwhelming as uh, the proponents would like us to think it is. Uh, the um, theme that it is something that is overwhelming and everybody supports it, even amongst young people, it depends on how the question is asked. When it's black and white, uh, the numbers are pretty uh, startling. But when you start having nuances like should it be legal mm -hmm. and should uh, the state support it and those kinds of uh, caveats and more nuanced answers, you'll find a very different picture. In every single state where uh, same-sex marriage has become legal or where it is pending, every single instance has even either been judicial fiat or legislative action. It has not been an action of the people. And earlier Joe was talking about the fact that uh, people are overwhelmingly for same-sex marriage and that this is something that people really are enthusiastic about and so forth. Uh, I would remind uh, your audience that this is something that uh, the activist groups have really been working so hard for and it is something that has started even in elementary schools. It's something that being promoted across all the grades in American public schools. And it's being, uh, of course, fought in the courts. It's being fought uh, in the public arena. So there's been a massive campaign to produce the kind of result that uh, the activists want to have. And it has been uh, very successful in many respects. But when you look at the instances where the uh, subject has been brought up to the American public, it has not found favor. All right. Well, I think maybe it's a mistake to say that uh, an overwhelming number of people, whether young people or others, are in favor. But certainly there's a 50-50 divide, and, and we have moved, that is, this country public opinion has moved much more in favor, 50 percent. But there are still, like you and your organization, what your organization represents, uh, many reservoirs of doubt and, and opposition. So those, those uh, communities have to be taken into account. 
Uh, well, in the states where it has come up for a vote, it has not always been 50-50. Mm -hmm. uh, the latest one, as I said, was North Carolina, where it was 61 percent. So while uh, I think the activists are gaining grounds, ground, uh, they have a long way to go. Well, that leads me to ask you then, Joe Deutsch, you know, where do we go from here? President Obama made the statement. You said it's very significant. Indeed, it's significant. We know from reports uh, overseas, our VOA reporters from Indonesia to Kenya to uh, Senegal, there's a deep, um, I would say, uh, reservation about this position. These are conservative societies, predominantly Muslim or or even uh, Catholic societies where, of course, uh, they haven't evolved, one could say, to this. And there's, some of them are quite disappointed that the president of, you know, the superpower in the world would come out in favor. But uh, I don't know that it really affects them per se, but this we have had this reaction. Uh, but where do we go from here, since it really is still a state's rights issue? Mm -hmm. President Obama having said what he said, still he's saying he defers to the states. And as Janice said, there are many states who are already passing amendments against, uh, you know, same-sex marriage. So where, where do we go from here? That was a lot of different things. <laughs> um, first of all, there are a couple countries that are predominantly Catholic countries that have passed the freedom to marry. Um, and what we are seeing um, in numbers is that what's happening around the world is people are hearing stories. They have friends now. They have family members now who are gay and lesbian. And they are understanding for the first time the impact of, of legal discrimination on these families. That's the journey the president took, and that's the journey many, many people are taking, and that's part of the most significant part of what the president announced last week. You could understand from him where he started, his religious background, how he got to where he is, who he talked to, what his family said to him, and how he now has realized that this is discrimination. And that's happening in households all across the country. And what is very clear to us, never is, has there been a time in this country where the majority should be ruling on the minority. If that was the case, quite frankly, I probably wouldn't have the right to vote. And, and most likely interracial families and would not be able to marry because they were the minority and we were the minority. That's not how this country is built. This country is built on fairness and what is, what is given to one should be given to all. And that's all we're asking right now. These are loving and committed families that are looking for real legal protection to protect our families, to protect our children, to build and strengthen the institution of marriage. That's what we're looking for. And that's the significance of what the president did last week. Turning back to you, Janice Krause, I want to turn what I said to Joe on its head a little bit to play the devil's advocate, because just as some of these uh, countries, these developing countries, whether from Indonesia, a much more developed developing country, to Senegal, uh, official opinion has been, you know, against what President Obama said. And the prevailing opinion is against same-sex marriage. It offends their religious beliefs. Many gay and lesbian communities in these developing countries are probably silently cheering, you know, what President Obama has just done by coming out publicly. So we, we really need to acknowledge that. They can't say it, you know, publicly. Uh, so um, once again, um, uh, you know, what would you say to, to, those, to those communities around the world? Uh, wh what message do you think this sends? I think um, our organization and many organizations that stand on principles are at a disadvantage when you hear stories like the ones Joe has told and uh, the president who talked about his daughters and talked about the military and brought in so many emotional stories. Uh, and who talk about fairness and equity and all of those things in the context of uh, throwing away morals and throwing away the mores of a country and the basic principles and foundations on which a country uh, such as America was built. Uh, we're at a disadvantage in that way because we talk about history, we talk about uh, uh, numbers, we talk about things in a more dispassionate way. And I think that puts us at a disadvantage. 
Uh, but this country is a fair country. This country was built on freedom. This country values very much uh, freedom of individuals. And we do, <laughs> Joel, uh, have elections. We do have uh, things built on the majority. Uh, we do not impose morals and other factors in elections uh, based on minority views. Uh, we disagree very strongly there. Uh, the majority does rule in this country. We are, we are a country of elections where fairness reigns in that regard. Um, so when it comes to the future in terms of this argument, I think people have to take a long-term view and take a view that looks at what's good for the nation. What is the best thing for the majority of the people in a nation? What is the stance that a nation must take to preserve freedom for everybody? and to keep the country strong. Many of the nations that you have cited as, as examples of uh, freedom for uh, lesbians and homosexuals uh, do not have a strong nation. And much of what has that country, those countries have been built on has been undermined. So I think you have to look at a strong foundation, and this country was built on Christian principles. Judeo-Christian principles underline much of the policy that has guided this country from its very outset. And I think it's very dangerous to start taking those stones out and disrupting the very foundation on which uh, our culture was built. Well, I have no doubt that we'll be hearing much more about this controversial topic in the, uh, the coming weeks. I'm afraid that's all the time we have on this edition of Encounter. I'd like to thank my guests, Joe Deutsch, Federal Director for Freedom to Marry, and Janice Krauss, Senior Fellow at Concerned Women for America. Ladies, thank you so much for coming in. Encounter was produced in Washington. Thanks to Anna Zalewski for booking our guests. Our engineers were Gary Jaffe and Jackson Witt. I'm Carol Castiel. Join me again next week for another Encounter on The Voice of America.